Welcome back, everyone. We have power. So, surprise, first show of the season, it was supposed to be Tuesday at 8 o'clock. That is when we'll be doing uh, my show this year, Tuesdays at 8 o'clock. Um, what a wild, wild weeks it's been. We are recovering from Hurricane Ida. Uh, the Tiger Bait staff is all safe and good. No major damage to anyone's property. We're all very thankful for that. And today we got power back. This is the Tiger Bait alternate studio. Um, and I am your host, Preston Guy. We have very special guest, Tommy Kryzan, joining us today. If you don't know who he is, you should know who he is. He's been around for a very long time in LSU media. I'm very excited to have him on today. And of course, I'm very excited to introduce a new sponsor to the show, Tremonti's Meat and Seafood. It's always fun when I get a really good sponsor because I just know what I'm promoting is really good stuff. It's really not hard to promote this. And, and Michael Tremonti, Tremonti's Meat and Seafood, is an excellent guy. Um, I know him very well, and I'm very excited to have someone I know and trust on as a sponsor for the show. Um, so that being said, we have two major things we're previewing, and that's it. Just, just two things we're going to be focusing on all day today. Uh, number one, LSU season prediction. We're going to see uh, how LSU does during the 2021 season. I invite you to give me your feedback and tell me what you think about. I've got a good prediction coming. I'm going to talk about that with Tommy Kryzan when I bring him on in just a bit. Um, we're also going to be previewing LSU UCLA. Uh, UCLA put a clobber knocking on a Hawaii team. How good is Hawaii? How good is UCLA? We don't know, but we do know that UCLA was a good bit better and they did it with a good ground and pound running attack. Uh, and, and I think that quite frankly, um, it's a good matchup for UCLA. I, I think just matchup wise, UCLA has the advantage against LSU's defense. And I'll talk more in depth about that. Um, but uh, just very excited to get this going. Uh, so I do have Tommy Kryzan who will be ready in just a couple minutes. I'm going to wait for him. He's actually popped up in our stream. I'm going to wait for him to give me a thumbs up and bring him in. Um, so my, my season thoughts ultimately come down to this. I think LSU is one season away. I think this is going to be a good team, y'all. I don't think we're looking at that five and five team, especially that three and five team, which was completely different from the the two and O team we saw down the stretch. So um, uh, I think we see more of the latter, and I think the personnel is going to resemble more of the latter. So uh, Mark Jet asking Preston Guy, yeah, that's me. I hope I didn't misspell my own name somewhere, especially a name like like Guy. But guys, if the, this is uh the impromptu this is the dress rehearsal um so if if there's any errors in the system or anything like that please forgive us because we got power back just a couple hours ago this is the first show of the season so we're working through all of our kinks tonight but yeah i think lsu is one season away i think we're gonna see i think i think max johnson's a winner a very smart quarterback. I've talked with his dad, Brad Johnson, a good bit, and, of course, his younger brother. Very smart family, football smarts, through the roof. Uh, and I think there are winners. He's made some very advanced throws uh, during his short time at LSU. However, uh, the running back's a little nicked up, and I'm not sure there is a dude, like the guy in that running back staple. Offensive line should be greatly improved. We will see. I don't, I'm not 100% certain how much better, but I do know a year of adding meat to your bones with four out of five starters returning is always a good thing. Um, defense is big question mark, but I'll be shocked. The worst part of that defense was defensive backfield. You have the best two corners in college football with Eli Ricks and Derek Stingley. I'd be shocked if they are not better. Uh, greatly improved on that front now. I think biggest question marks coordinators, can they call plays? We don't know. Anybody who says they do know if they're good or not, they're lying because they never seen them call plays. How could you know? Um, so, I, I, look, I think this team is uh, heading for 10-2. and two. 
Uh, let's see comments here. Why is LSU recruiting cooled way off? I don't know about that, man. It's it's pretty pretty hot, if you ask me. We'll, we'll go more in depth into that. We want to focus on the kickoff. Uh, and sounds great. Thank you, Eric. We have a new sound system here, a new little studio going on. Hopefully, it looks and sounds great. I have Tommy Chrysan here. I'm about to add him to the stream. Yay! How's it going? Can you hear me? Yeah, man. I'm doing great. Thanks for having Good. me. Good. No, thank you for coming on. You're doing me a huge favor, Tommy. I'm very excited to join with you and help promote our good friend, Mike Tremonti and Tremonti's Meat and Seafood this year. Uh, you do a lot. I mean, I mean, a lot. You're all over the place. It's one <laughs> my personal favorite thing you do is the oldest dude on TikTok, <laughs> talking <laughs> sports with TK. Can you tell the people what you do? Well, we'll start with that, you know, and I had a plan for this and we'll get to what that plan is. But many, many months ago, I started a TikTok account. Well, my son, who's 30 years old, I sent him a link and he texted me back. He said, Dad, aren't you a little bit old to be on TikTok? And I said, well, yeah, I'm the oldest dude on TikTok. That's how I got the little moniker thing, okay? And I was trying to build up some followers, which I've done. Uh, I'm seven and three on my last 10 baseball picks, hit the Phillies today. They were down six, nothing and one. That doesn't happen all the time. But uh, I'm having a blast with it. I've gotten to meet some people. A lot of people have reached out to me because, uh, Preston, the whole thing is I've been planning it with the YouTube channel and the Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know, the launch of my website, which ironically came like an hour ago. Uh, so you're gonna be like one of the first people to hear about it. I have a website and let me back you up two years ago. Uh, I was working in Las Vegas with a great friend of mine who passed away, Dave, the meat man, Scandaliato. Uh, and we were having a lot of success. He had a website where he sold picks. And if you didn't get to pick the winner, they gave you a pick after that. So you kind of got a, you paid your money and you were going to get a pick until you got a winner. Well, Dave passed away unexpectedly and unfortunately. I miss him every day. He was a close friend for 25 years. He lived in Vegas, a professional gambler, professional handicapper, and, and all this stuff. So I decided to, in his honor, start a website with sports consultants like he did that uh, would, you know, go ahead and, and, and sell some picks if people are like to bet on football. And I've got two guys, Trey Blossman and Anthony Gallo, who have done picks with me on the radio and podcast for over 25 years. Myself, got another guy, got some other people wanting to join us. And we're just going to have some fun and sell some picks. Uh, you know, what we think is going to happen in football, we're not a gambling site, not at all. Uh, simply advice, sports consultants, meat and potatoes, USA.com. Dave's site was called Meat and Potatoes. Well, I had to go meatandpotatoesusa.com uh, to get it all straight. So it's live right now. It's got its own Facebook and Instagram account, Meat and Potatoes. You'll see my name, Tommy Chrysan. And uh, if anybody that bets on football, it's a good chance to uh, buy some picks, win some money. And if we don't give you a winner, we'll give you another pick. We'll give you a pick till you get a winner. That's a pretty good deal. Uh, you're going to make some money, but forget, you got to be lucky when you gamble. Not everybody – Thousands of people you can get a uh, pick from, but not everybody's going to get them all right. But we got documented success with myself in Las Vegas, Trey and Anthony uh, on radio and podcast. Everything's been documented through the years, hitting 58, 59 percent of their picks. So uh, we're going to throw it on the wall. We got long shot picks with Andy Wells. I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, meat and potatoes, USA dot com. Just check it out. We got picks posted for this coming weekend. Uh, we're, we're ready to roll. That is awesome. And you did not tell me now, we have breaking news about this website. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it just kind of timed out that way because I didn't know I'd get it launched tonight because of the hurricane. I mean, not without power, without internet. I'm actually in a friend's unoccupied office right now speaking to you here in Baton Rouge. I'm in Baton Rouge. Uh, and it all worked out. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to be on with you. And, uh, and keep in mind, Ronnie Rance and I do sports shorts daily. Live on Facebook, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Mondays and Fridays, we're at Tremonti's Meat and Seafood. Uh, I see the logo behind you and on the screen above my head. And on Wednesdays, we're over in Port Allen at Court Street Cafe. Uh, a little morning stuff. We, we hit a lot of hard topics. We're getting a lot of views, and, and uh, we have a lot of fun with that. And I got my podcast, Talking Sports with TK, available on all your major platforms. About to approach 35,000 listens. So, hey, I got it going on. It's fun to have a job where you have fun and you love to do what you do. And I've been a sportscaster for over 30 years now coming up on 35. So, Hey, it's what I do. 
meat and potatoes usa.com there you go perfect there you go guys uh, appreciate it to that. the comments and then for you people cannot cannot contact me facebook instagram twitter youtube channel tommy christ fan because i will uh you can always you know send me an email I, i'm an open book you email you're going to get me you call you're going to get me you're not going to get some answering service that's going to say hey, i'll give the message to tommy no you're going to talk to tommy christ and you're going to email tommy christ and we're going to go from there yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and how could you not want to listen to this guy? Listen to that pre presence he's got, guys. It, it's, it's not your first radio gig here, I could tell. 35, um, 35 so, years. How many years? 35 I've been doing 35. this. How, how, many, how many of our fans listening right now does your tenure outdate their whole age? I mean, that that's awesome, man. Well, I have so much respect a lot. For I, I, got, I got a good story for you. First, I not, I've announced thousands of games. I've hosted shows all over the country. I've worked on ESPN, Fox. I, I've been lucky, okay? Um, first football game I ever announced was a Covington High versus Mandeville Jamboree High School football game in 1987. And I had the old cassette tape of the game, okay? And about two years later, I stumbled across that cassette tape, and I'm like, holy smokes, this is that first game I ever did. And, I, you know, that's back when you had a cassette recorder. And I put it on. I pulled the tape out and burned it because no one should ever have to listen to that. That's how bad it was. But, you know, I've done <laughs> thousands of games. I was the voice of the Covenant Lions for years, voice of the Denim Springs Yellow Jackets for many years. Uh, you know, I, I announced college games. or voice of the Southeastern Lions when they brought football back with Hal Mummy. I hosted Hal shows, Billy Kennedy, uh, Dan Canterbury. All, I did everything at Southeastern for a couple of years. So I've been around, Preston. I mean, geez, yeah. I'm, I'm getting old, man. I'm lucky to have you on my show. I'm, I'm very excited about that, and I'm, I'm very excited to get the chance to promote Tremontes with you. Look, uh, I am going to mix it up with this comment from Carl here just so we catch him while he's watching for sure. Uh, what do you think about ULL in Texas? Any kind of shock there you see? Well, I'll tell you this. ULL is getting a check for $1.5 to go over there and play the game. It's a paycheck game for them. And I think they're going to come home with a win. Hey, they went on a road last year against a good Iowa State team and beat them, won it on the road in front of no fans. Okay, Texas will have fans. That'll be a difference. And then Iowa State, well, they're ranked in the top 10 right now. And uh, the Raging Cajuns, who have 20 of 22 starters back, a great coach in Billy Napier, a quarterback, Levi Lewis from Scotlandville, who can do it all. Very good. If he's a little bigger. He's an NFL prospect, and he might still get a shot. Uh, really like the Cajuns. I'd put it this way, Preston. They are going into Austin, Texas, expecting to win. They're not going to go play it close or try to be tight at halftime. And, yeah. I mean, they, they're going in there to win that football game. And in paycheck games, that doesn't always happen. You know, you, sometimes yeah. teams, you know, you know, McNeese is coming into Baton Rouge on September 11th. They, they, they're not going to win that game. But they're going to yeah. go in and play hard and compete and get after it and try to force a break or two, throw a, do a fancy play to try to level the field because they're not as good as LSU. That's not the case here. The Raging Cajuns are going to Austin, Texas, with the full intention of winning the game and collecting $1.5 million to throw in the budget. Uh, I, and I love your analysis there. I remember covering uh, uh, Levi Lewis as a senior at Scotlandville High, and he was really, really talented, great left-handed quarterback, plays bigger than he lists on the sheet. And, and of course, uh, ULL has a great coach there. I definitely like their chances. Man, if Texas loses that game, I mean, how many steps are they away from just being the next Tennessee? I mean, my well, goodness. And they got a new coaching staff, Sarkeesian's mm -hmm. over there. You know, they, I mean, they, I mean, it, Texas's job is just not what they once were. You know, they're kind of like Notre Dame. They think they're up here, but they're not. You know, they, yeah. they, they got a long ways to go. And I can tell you this, it's going to take them a long time to really compete in the SEC. They're just so far behind. And, you know, uh, again, you, you got to like the Raging Cajuns' chances. Of course. Yeah, and absolutely. And look, uh, we're going to move on. I, I, I do want to dive into LSU's season outlook, not necessarily the UCLA, but what what do you think of the LSU football team in this season? Kind of kind of the highest and the lowest on the last two seasons we've seen in the last few years. Yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting season. Uh, you know, it's not going to be like 2019 when it was the best offensive team in the history of college football. And I don't think it's going to be like last year when it had the worst defense in LSU history, according to the numbers. So, I, you know, I think, I mean, you know, they're going to play 12 games if they all get played. LSU's going to win at least nine games. And maybe more if you get a little break, a little bounce of the ball, whatever, and stay away from some injuries in some certain positions. So, 
you know, LSU has got too much depth, too much talent. They've recruited well for many years, and 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 that pays off. When you got talent, you got depth at, across the board, and they're going to play different groupings or personnel groupings on a defensive line. I mean, the defense is going to be improved, okay? But let's remember this, Preston. Last August, Ed Ogeron said that Bo Pelini's defense would be better than the defense from 2019. They ended up being the worst defense in LSU history, and they fired Bo Pelini. So, yeah. you know, it's all about what you do, not what you say. But I just got to believe with, with Ricks and Stanley, and I, I like the linebacker Jones from Clemson. I know yeah. Mike Scarborough's been out there to see him a bunch. You know, Mike mm-hmm. does such a great job with TigerBait.com. You know, Ali Gay. I mean, they, they got some football players out there. And I like the new coaching staff because this is what happens. When you get a new coaching staff, complacency goes out the window. If you're a player, you're like, hey, I, I got to get this right. I got to yeah. show this new coach what I'm capable of. And then yeah. the coach is wanting to say, hey, I got all these players. I want to see who can do what, when, how, where, the whole bit. So, uh, you know, sometimes when that coaching staff just returns, there's a little bitty degree of complacency. That's out the window, LSU offensively and defensively. You know, you got All-American place kicker. Uh, I think LSU wins at least nine games this year. And, you know, and, and if a few things go their way, they could be in Atlanta, which is – the step you got to take to get to the college football playoff. I, I, I agree with you. So, so if they're, we're putting you down nine and three, is that what you're going with? Or uh, nine going wins yeah, or more? It could be more. We don't know. Yeah. And, you know, because you know, that saying Preston, you always got one game that you think you're yeah. going to win and you don't. And then you win one that you didn't think you were going to win. You know, that that's part of it. And that's why when you gamble, you got to be lucky because you're going to get mm-hmm. lucky. Like today, I had the Phillies. They're down six nothing. They win the game seven six. Right. You know that's luck. Right. I mean, that ain't nothing on me. You that's never luck. know when when Les Miles is just going to say spike the ball with one second left. I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, I, 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 it's always kind of weird. You you, you want to go on paper and put a hard prediction together, but that's just not the world of sports. It's just kind of it comes down to two or three plays, really. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with your assessment for the most part. Um, the number one thing I'm saying is this team is, I think they're a year away and the big question mark is those coordinators. Um, I'm kind of, I'm just projecting them to be middle of the pack sec coordinators. That's what my predictions based off of. They could be the worst. They could be the best. Who knows? Right. Yeah. It does some unknown there. And it's all about what happens in the 12 games. I mean, right now it's great because they hadn't lost a game. They hadn't given up a first down, you know, and none of that stuff. So, uh, anyway, it's, uh, you know, it is what it is, and it's, it's you yeah. got to let it play out. You don't know. I don't know. The coaches, they could, if they would drink some truth, sir, and they tell you they don't know exactly what's going to happen, but they're going to put these outstanding, talented players in position to be successful and in position to help the team win a football game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, so I, I am going to go ahead and put, make my prediction. I, I, I will say this team is heading for 10 and two. I, I think there's some good pieces. You look at the recruiting rankings, the talent is definitely there, but they're just, they're, they're, they're kind of young. They're kind of young. Um, so I, I, we have a question here from Brian Madair, and this is probably going to apply to a lot of people. Uh, is there a way to watch the game on the internet? Uh, I believe the game's picked up by Fox. Um, a rare Fox broadcast by LSU. Um, and if you have your cable information login, I think you should be able to go to Fox, uh, uh, you know, Fox Sports, stream it on your phone and enter your cable information and watch it. That's that's my uh, best assessment of that. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, uh, Tommy, I want to ask you, do you have a very special relationship with Michael Tremonti and promoting Tremonti seafood? Can you talk about that and uh, what makes Tremonti special? Well, I, I can tell you exactly. I got can give you the answer to that. I've known Mike for a long time, um, you know, and I've been a customer of his. I'm a friend of his, and we have a business relationship. And here's the difference, Preston. You you can get a hamburger in a lot of places. You can get some party platters for the tailgating party in a lot of places. We all know that. The difference is the personal service you get from Mike Tremonti and his staff. I can't tell you how many times I've been over there and I watch people, his workers carry stuff to the car or to the truck for people and always making sure they got everything they need and double check in. And I mean, you know, it's, it's just that personal touch. You're not just ordering a burger. You're not just ordering a platter for your tailgating party or your home gating party. You're, you're getting, you're helping a local business who works very hard, 
everybody on his staff, I mean, you see them during crawfish season, they don't stop. You know, they, they work very hard. They got the game process. And I mean, they're just, they're just blowing and going, working hard to make a good living. And they got great products. Now, hey, yeah. good meat ain't cheap. Cheap meat ain't good. That's what Mike will tell you. You want a steak? You don't pay for it, but you're going to get a great steak. But the whole thing with Mike and his entire staff, you know, it, it, you become friends and you want to deal with friends. You want to deal with people that, you know, that, that are nice to you and you become friends with over the years, like he has with so many of his regular customers and the tremendous wine selection and whiskey and liquor selection. You know, it's just a great, it's a, it's the neighborhood meat and seafood market, you know, kind of like the neighborhood bar where everybody knows your name. I mean, everybody, it, it's just, People need to really, Tremonti's Meat and Seafood on Facebook or Instagram. All the daily specials are posted there. Everything going on. And, of course, Tremonti's.com. You can place your court catering order right there on the Internet, and you'll get a confirmation email. And here's the other thing, Preston. You go in there and you tell Mike, hey, look, I got, I got 12 people coming to the house. They know what to do. They know how much. They, what do you want? Catfish, shrimp, boudin, rice. What do you want? You know, you want some cake balls? They, they fix it up for you. You say, hey, I got 50 people going to be at the tailgate party. They know what to do. They don't have to guess. They're going to get you what you need to have a good function, large or small. Or you go get the lunch special or crawfish or crabs or, you know, the, the honey-baked salmon that they put out from time to time, rotisserie chickens. I mean, it's just a complete place run by really good people. It's a local business. And uh, for those of you that have been in there, I know Mike thanks you. If you hadn't been there yet, 12451 Old Jefferson Highway, right down a block from Parkview Baptist Church and School. Go see Tremonti's. Go ask Mike, Wayne, Lauren, Calvin, Tony, the whole staff. They'll take care of you. I promise you. I'm in there on Mondays and Friday mornings. I usually hang around for lunch. Be happy to say hello to you. Tremonti's Meat and Seafood. I, I could go on for hours and hours, but the best way is for you to go try it if you haven't already. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And then one thing you touched on is just how hardworking he is and how what a great guy he is. And you know, that's the cool thing about when you go support a locally owned business, y'all, you're not sending some CEO's kid to buy him a fourth yacht. You're, you're, you're supporting a local businessman who's yeah. kid go to school up the road and a good and, one. And keep, and keep in mind, Mike reverses that. He's very ha- active with the breast cancer month with the, the breast cancer foundation. Right. I mean, he sponsored countless little teams and, you know, so, I mean, look, believe me, he, he has done his share of donations, contributions and, and getting behind really good causes. Uh, he does that the hunger, uh, hung, hungry for the hungers, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, he just, he's involved and, and that's the kind of people I want to do business with. And if I just need to stop and get a Diet Coke, that's what I do. You know, or if I'm ready to have the big party, that's what I do. Tremonti's Meat and Seafood, you cannot go wrong. Absolutely. And, and and I could not recommend a better place to go every Saturday this football season. TK, let's talk a little football here. Georgia Clemson, what a, what an awesome week one matchup. Um, a lot of times these week one matchups look good when they schedule them, not so much when they play them. Uh, this is one I'm excited for. It's it's Clemson minus three. Who are you taking? Well, you got to go to meatandpotatoesusa.com to find that out. But the what you got to know is this is a game that could have playoff implications, even though it's being played in week one. OK, uh, so, you know, you, you got to know that. And it's two premier programs that have been there, done that. Georgia trying to cross that line. They don't have a national title recently uh, like Clemson does. The playoff appearances like Clemson does. So, you know, the game's going to be in Charlotte, North Carolina, neutral site. Man, it, it should be a well of a football game because both teams know that if they get the win, yeah, they, they're going to stay up high in those rankings for when we get to November 2 and the college football playoff rankings start coming out. Then it kind of matters. It, it really don't matter where you're ranked right now. That's that's insignificant, and history has showed us that. That should be a heck of a football game. But, yeah, I don't know how many people are going to watch it. They might be watching the Tigers and the Bruins from the Rose Bowl. Yeah, here's a good question. Who you got as lead dog out of the running back room for LSU? Well, I don't know how healthy Davis Price or, or Emery are, but Kiner and Goodwin have looked really good at practice. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody's going to step up. It's going to be running back by committee, and then whoever's yeah. doing the best job and not turning the football over, that's who the offensive staff's going to keep putting out there. But you're going to see a little bit of everything at first. And, look, mm-hmm. Max Johnson, I, I think this is uh, this is going to be a big year for him. Keep in mind, he went to Gainesville last year and won. There's not a lot of quarterbacks who can say they went to Gainesville as a freshman and won a football game. That's not a long list. He did it. 
Okay, so that's confidence. Here's what I like about Max. If I'm getting too long here, let me know. But here's what I like about Max Johnson. He's the son of an NFL quarterback whose dad won a Super Bowl. More so than the football and the tape room and the X's and the O's, what Max Johnson learned by observing his dad is the time that it takes to be successful. The time you have to put in as a quarterback in the weight room, in the meeting room, on the practice field, throwing the seven on seven, the time that it takes for you to achieve success at a high level, he witnessed it front and center. You know, same thing with Nussmeyer. He, his daddy didn't win a Super Bowl, but actually was on the Saints team for a little while. Mm-hmm. They realized the time that it takes, the effort, the dedication that it takes, that's a plus to me. I look for Max Johnson. I, I, don't, know, he, not, I don't know if he's going to be all SEC or anything like that, but I think if you're an LSU Tiger fan, you, you can feel good that he's the quarterback. You know, unfortunately, Brennan's out of the picture, at least for now. So right now it's all about Max Johnson, and uh, I think Tiger fans are going to like what they see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I agree with your assessment on Max Johnson. I don't know if he's going to light it up with 30 plus touchdowns this year, but I do know he's going to win some ball games because well, that's, that's what it's all about winning the game. It, he, he's gladly throw for 18 does. touchdowns if they win 10 or 11 games, exactly. as opposed to if he throws for 32 touchdowns and they're seven and five. You know, I mean, he'll yeah. trade that in a minute because it's all about winning the game and winning a football game is hard to do. Them guys on the other sideline are on scholarships. Them other coaches are getting paid millions and millions of dollars. It's hard to line up and win a football game at any level. And the higher you go, to, the more difficult. So, yeah, it's going to be – it's all about winning the football game. And, James, just for my answer, I think he uh, TK nailed it on the head. It's going to be running back by committee, especially with the veteran guys being banged up, and then you got two true freshmen uh, mixing it in there. Um I would not be surprised if no one got 10 carries. Um, but if someone did, it's because one of them got in there and just caught fire and they they rode him. <laughs> Carl Dunn with a great comment here. TK is making me hungry. Been a while since I had it. I mean, look, I'm hungry too, just listen to you. I mean, <laughs> can can you tell it's it's a genuine comment? It's not, you know, guys, you know, just saying whatever, reading a script. It's it's 100 percent real. It is the best place to get your special meats and seafoods this football season. Um, uh, so I, I do want to ask you, move shifting gears here. We kind of looked at the season outlook. I think we're both at that 9, 10-ish wins type point. What about UCLA? Of course, they've only gone 11 and 21 under a big hire, Chip Kelly. Um, a lot of people expected big things because he was so great at Oregon, but they haven't quite win. He's gotten a ton of excuses with COVID and whatnot. And now he's got, you know, senior quarterback and lots of his pieces in place. The recruiting rankings haven't been there. They've ranked around the, the mid thirties in recruiting. Uh, do you think this is the year UCLA busts the mold and upsets LSU? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if they can do that. They beat Hawaii, but, you know, Hawaii would struggle with some high school teams in Louisiana, okay? So yeah. don't read a whole lot into that. Um, yeah, one thing I think you should observe is that their quarterback, uh, Dorian Thompson Robinson, only completed 50% of his passes against Hawaii. That ain't going to work against Eli Ricks and Stingley and the rest of the guys back there. So, so you know, it's kind of a situation where you got to – Look at everything, and I think a thing that works in LSU's advantage is the new coordinators. Uh, Hawaii don't have a lot to – I mean, at UCLA don't have a lot to go with. LSU's got some tape to look at, but, you know, and again, meatandpotatoesusa.com if you want to know what I think. And look, one thing we do on that website, sometimes we pick an over and under, a first line, a first half line, a first quarter line. So, you know, just because we, you know, don't think we're picking one of the two teams against the point spread. It could be a total on the game. There's lots of things you can do, and that's all a part of meatandpotatoesusa.com. Preston, you know how, like, these guys, when they got to announce a game, they can't comment because they don't want to be, you know, you know, having a favorite. Well, meatandpotatoesusa.com was just launched today. I, I can't comment on the two games you asked me about. I did comment on the Texas game, though. Yeah, yeah, good. So yeah. I apologize for that, but, hey, man, business is business. Well, you know what I really like about what, what you're describing about your site is it's not a tell you what to do and just listen to me because it is here's the information. 
make an informed decision based on what context I'm providing you. I mean, that, that sounds really cool to me. A really cool comment here from uh, uh, J oh, doo -doo -doo -doo, James P. Bitterman. <laughs> Big businesses are not going to buy your child's sports uniforms. I mean, another great reason why, why I think both of us are going to love supporting uh, Tremonti's this year. Um, so, and look, here's a comment from Tommy Howard confirming what I was saying. Yes, you can use your TV prov provider for Fox Sport app. I know that's pertinent for everybody, you know, with cable out, power out, just prayers for everybody in the city and state. I mean, I know a lot of people are affected by that right now. So hopefully that helps out. Um, TK, I really, I'm so appreciative of you coming on the show, being my first guest here. Uh, I mean, uh, and I'm really excited that we got to run through your, your new website. I, I think you're going to do great things there as you've done throughout your career. Thank you. Why don't you tell people just one last time where they can go follow you, how they can support what you've got going on. Well, the website is meatandpotatoesusa.com, but then subscribe to me on YouTube, Tommy Chrysan, and Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Tommy Chrysan. My son's last name's Chrysan, lives on the Noah Shore. There's no other ones. You'll find it. Uh, you know, email me, TommyChrysan at gmail.com. And of course, uh, the oldest dude on TikTok. If you're a, a TikTok person, uh, you'll find me at over there, you got to look for Talking Sports with TK, which is the name of my podcast. We'll be dropping a couple of podcasts tomorrow. And uh, Preston, I, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, it's great to talk about Mike Tremonti and Tremonti's meat and seafood and, and great to talk sports. And and uh, good luck with your show. Uh, just, just be yourself and go have some fun, man. That's what it's all about. Thank you, Tommy. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate y'all. Thank you for coming on today, Tommy. Uh, very excited to continue this show this season. I do think this is going to be a fun year, Tiger fans. I'm going to get to your comments here. This is the fun part of the show. We're going to be wrapping up at 745 today. i got Mike Scarborough coming on with uh, B uh, Buddy Sonji after this. Sonji, blah. <laughs> uh, another veteran group there. They're going to have some good predictions and and, and uh, recap going on. Um so y'all yeah, stay tuned after the show. I'll be hopping off at 745. Here's a comment here. I can't wait for my son-in-law to get me a nice meat tray from Tremonti's and invite me over for game day. <laughs> James P. Bitterman, of course, uh, my father-in-law taught me everything I know about any kind of sports broadcasting. He uh, had a nice show going on, Mr. Bitterman show in Lafayette, where he talked LSU and he talked all sorts of sports uh, in a very uh, bitter way. Um, uh, out there in Lafayette, a bit of a legend himself. So very cool father-in-law for me there. Thank you for coming and supporting the show. Hawaii could beat Bishop Sycamore. All right, guys, I, Carl Dunn has just dropped some awesome comments tonight. Thank you for watching the first show of the year, Carl. Uh, Bishop Sycamore, if y'all did not follow that story, Bishop Sycamore was recently on TV uh, on ESPN as a high school team from Ohio playing against IMG Academy, who, if you know recruiting, you know IMG Academy. I mean, they're where all the four- and five-star recruits in the country go to Florida, where they focus on college prep in the sense of being a college you know, athlete, not necessarily a student. But they have great talent athletes. It's definitely a legitimate school out there. Uh, it's just more focused on the athletics. Um, Bishop Sycamore, there's – they, they – they, you know, they ESPN had a marketing agency line this team up, and it is apparently a fake high school with players who were, you know, not even in high school at all. Like some the Juco players playing for them, and, and it's now like considered a huge safety risk. This team's been playing these games, and they, they got absolutely manhandled. And, it, you know, they've played they documented, I don't know, like 10, 15 games and lost almost all of them. But very funny. Hawaii could beat Bishop Sycamore. Yeah, I, I would say Hawaii could and probably a bunch of the good. I'm going to tell you what, what team could beat Bishop Sycamore. It was uh, the team I went to go see Liberty Magnet off on Friday. Uh, they have a running back, Caleb Jackson, uh, and they played their first ever varsity football game, even though it was Jamboree. It was kind of their first full dress rehearsal. They looked really good that is a team ready to play they had a good linebacker they had a good running back uh caleb jackson's real deal i would not be shocked to see him make a push for a fifth star so funny comment call done keep it coming uh what happened to malik neighbors why is he not playing for the next 
few games. Uh, he got hurt. That's that's uh, some sort of shoulder injury. Um, that's what I'm hearing. Um, I just want to say one thing popped out to me looking at the game summary. Coach O was talking about the health of the team, talking about you know uh, you know having um, running backs back. Uh, after being nicked up in the preseason and having, um, uh, you know, uh, most of our all of the offensive line back minus uh, Garrett Dellinger, who's kind of beat up right now, but he probably wasn't you know, going to start as a true freshman, although he's incredibly talented. Um, uh, this is a very healthy roster coming into game one. Very healthy. Of course, Miles Brennan being the big injury. However, he was so close with Max Johnson and skill and talent, um, it almost is a good thing that one of them just was able to clear room for the other to focus reps on him. So I really look at, you know, Malik neighbors is kind of the one, you know, injury that may hurt the team. And, you know, we don't necessarily know. I mean, this receiving core is absurdly talented. Um, but we don't necessarily know, I mean, how he would have cracked into that lineup. We'll, we'll see. I mean, it is wide open behind, um, behind, uh, of course, uh, Kashan Butte, who I think everybody is forgetting. He's the all-time SEC single-game receiving yards record holder from last year. First guy to ever catch 300 yards in an SEC football game. So I think a lot of people forgot that. But behind him, uh, you got a, just a ton, a ton of guys, a lot of really talented guys that have been waiting their turn behind a plethora of first-round draft picks. Uh, I'm going to talk to you real quick about Tremontis. Uh, of course, they are paying our bills tonight. They are sponsoring the show. But they are, uh, we were just talking about how great Mike Tremonti is, a uh, local business owner, supports the community. Uh, you support local, you support um, you know, your own community. So I cannot endorse them enough. Uh, they are the home of the ribeye roll, which is the best piece of meat. If you don't believe me, here's my wife unprompted leaving the comment about that ribeye roll. It's a ribeye wrapped in cream cheese, jalapeno, and bacon. It's the best thing I've ever slapped on the grill. I will eat that nonstop. Uh, it belongs on your tailgating grill. Uh, they have Chairman's Reserve Wagyu beef. 30 kinds of saucers, 30. And that's a lot of variety. They also have lunch daily available weekdays until about three o'clock or so. Uh, they do catering and they are your headquarters for tailgating and home gating this season. Whether you're going to the stadium, whether you're watching it on TV, they're your place to go. And look, they'll be open this Saturday, they're reopening Saturday. So if you're having trouble, uh, you know, getting your, 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 uh, food together and whatnot. A lot of people are, uh, my fridge is empty right now because of the storm. My power just came back on. So of course I'll be going to Tremonti's to restock. They are located on old Jefferson, right up the road from Parkview Baptist, who also got power back earlier today. They announced their game is on tomorrow. Uh, you can go to Tremonti's.com or give them a call at 225-757-7665. All right, guys, get your questions in. Uh, this is it, the final stretch. We've got a few more minutes before we got to hop off. I'm going to try to get to every everybody who comments. We'll say before 740, I'm going to get to your comment. Everybody who comments from here on here. Let's see here. Carl the Cat is a legend. I'd love to know the backstory there, how James P. Bitterman knows Carl the Cat. Let's see here. How bad is the look if Tennessee loses to Bowling Green before you scoff? They lost to Georgia State a few years ago, and then Pruitt, uh, and that was on Pruitt when he was stacking talent uh, that he transferred. That that was 2019. That that was that was not long ago at all. Um, Daniel, I, I mean, look, the answer is it looks really bad. What's what's the score of that game? I'm, I'm gonna cheat real quick, guys, and pop in on some college football scores because I'm actually really sad. I really want to watch the games right now. Let's see. God, Coastal Carolina is. Bing Citadel, uh, 31 nothing. Weber State up on Utah, shockingly, 7-3. Ohio State up 7-0 on Minnesota. I, I, Tennessee's supposed to play tonight. I'm, I'm pretty sure they do play tonight, but I don't see it. Oh, wait, here we go. Maybe because I got top 25 on. We'll just pop that into SEC. I don't know how to show. Uh, Tennessee's up 14 zip. I don't think Bowling Green's going to pull that upset at this rate. Um, but no, it, it looks really bad, Daniel. However, if you're Tennessee since 1998, 
uh, you had Peyton Manning, you lost him, T. Martin, then Philip Fulmer, you got tired of those nine win seasons, and then you got tired of nine win seasons under Butch Jones. Since that moment, I mean, how much more embarrassment can a program take with that much pride? I mean, they have a hundred thousand stadium. I mean, and look, you want to talk about bandwagon fans? That's the opposite of bandwagon fans. The Tennessee fans are the most loyal fan base I've ever seen. Give them full credit in the world. But I mean, you just can't go through much more embarrassment than Tennessee. They are at rocky bottom. You see what I did there? Um, and they've got a lot of work to do to build that program back up. And, uh, I'm not sure that's an easy job. I think you need an outstanding coach to come in and rebuild that thing. I, I don't think they're a program like like Alabama. You could hire a good coach at, and they still win at a pretty high level for a, quite a while um, before you know the juggernaut would start to be just a good program. Uh, LSU is a school where you can bring in a good coach, and because it's so easy to recruit, because it's so easy to just uh, <laughs> it's just not that difficult to recruit and win at LSU. That's, that's the fact of the matter. I mean, it kind of is a program set up to win. I'm not sure Tennessee is that. So I think they're going to need a good coach to come in. What is going to happen with the high school? Fo- oh, I thought this, I'm sorry. This, uh, I was thinking this is a comment about Bishop Sycamore again, but James Phillips, uh, what's going to happen in the high school football schedules for teams hit hard by Ida? You know, James, I'm not sure that I have a good answer for that. Um, and I'm not sure that anybody, including the schools, have a great answer for that right now. I'm sure they're going to try to recover some sort of season. I don't know how bad the damage is in South Louisiana. Uh, I do know they're, they're, they're I would be shocked. I mean, of course, there's going to be a ton of games missed this week. But um, I do know that during Katrina and whatnot, we saw schools completely closed down. And, of course, their whole season was devastated. I will tell you, if you want to keep up with this kind of stuff, Robin Fambro at The Advocate is an absolute legend at keeping up with these things. She is all on it. I would definitely recommend looking into what she's got going on. But right now, James, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure if there is a great answer for that. Let's see here. Mike, predict that Tap was a heavy lean to LSU. What happened? All right, Brian, I do remember that, and that fell apart. I'm going to tell you what. Brian Madare. Tune in to his show starting at 8 o'clock tonight and ask that there. He'll be more than happy to give you a great answer. Uh, <laughs> James Bitterman, Tennessee, 14-0. and 0. I don't know about that one. I think Bitterman is uh, is uh, acting a little uh, – uh, trying, to, trying to cut up a little bit here in the comments. <laughs> oh, man. And apparently anybody who in BR who lived in BR knows Carl the Cat. Well, I lived in BR. But uh, yeah, um, yeah. So Tennessee, man, fourteen and zero. That's just. Oh wait, that's the score. <laughs> I thought he was trying to say that's their record this year. Yes, they're up fourteen nothing. Uh, let's see other scores we've got going on tonight. Uh, oh man, not too interesting uh, scores. We got Florida International up twenty one nothing over UT Martin up seven nothing on uh, Western Kentucky. We have let's see here. Ohio State continues to be up seven nothing on Minnesota. I am interested to see how. Uh, Ohio State rebounds, or not rebounds, uh, they were in the national champion, <laughs> rebound from that whooping uh, Alabama put on them. Uh, let's see here, Utah up, or, I'm sorry, Utah down 3-7 to seven on Weber State. So uh, I, I am going to talk a little more going into that matchup with uh, LSU versus uh, UCLA. Uh, and I think offensively UCLA matches up pretty well against this LSU defense. I think LSU has – what will end up being one of the better defensive backfields in the country because you've got the two best corners in the country. They are absolute studs. That being said, they were there last year. And guess what? They were really good last year. So they still were historically bad. And it's just, there was a a post by uh, not Bo Pelini um, saying, well, if you look at that play, there were several other players covered. And that was the vibe last year is, yeah, they did a great job coverage, but (laughs) <laughs> on any play, there's always one guy who's open. That's all you need. That's all you need. So uh, can they – I'm looking for Jay Ward to step up. I think Sage Ryan 
will find a spot in this defense. Uh, and Major Burns is coming in. A lot of people are expecting things with him, and they're very tightly contested with Todd Harris. A lot of DBs, I think they'll be some of the best defensive backfield. That being said, UCLA is not a team that likes to pass. I mean, they threw the ball 20 times last week, 10 for 20 for, uh, what was it, like 200 yards. The quarterback went there. Uh, um, and they're going to run the ball. Uh, they had a, a running back, Charbonnet, last week, ran for about 17 yards a carry. He got uh, three touchdowns on six carries, and he is a he, he's a bowling ball. He, he's ahead of steam, uh, and I don't I think LSU has a lot of bodies in that front seven, but I think that front seven is going to be more of a pass rushing type front seven. We'll see. Uh, I think they're going to run mostly four two defense. I think Mike Jones, who Mike Jones in the middle there, is going to be a good player. Uh, I, I think Damone Clark is going to be, I mean, we've seen what he's done throughout his career. He's been, you know, adequate at middle linebacker. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, guys. I would be remiss if I did not put this up here. Esteban, what's up, man? Every single show, PG, what's up? What's up, Esteban? I'm really happy to have you here again for this show for another great football season. But anyways, what I was talking about, I, I, I don't think LSU up the middle is going to be this unpenetrable force. I think it's going to be a good defense against the running attack i don't think it'll be great i think against passing they will be great um let's see no way mike jones plays inside see blaine i i think any linebacker in this defense is going to be what we would what most fans would consider inside because there's going to be a lot of two linebacker systems and of course recently we've been used to watching a lot of the three four and those outside backers are those i mean they're glorified defensive ends um, so yeah, I, I think he'll play inside ish, but no, he will probably, if you do run a four, three, he probably will not be your true middle linebacker. You are correct. <laughs> Go Tigers. Esteban. Yeah. Everybody knows what's up, man. We love having Esteban here. Um, but anyways, I think it's a good matchup. Uh, look at the talent guys. LSU's got more five-star players than UCLA has four-star players. LSU has 10 times as many four-star players. LSU has had a top five recruiting class in each of the last three recruiting cycles. UCLA ranks in the lower 30s. Um, I think that tells you a lot of what you need. Uh, and I, I think that they've got a lot of pieces in place to make a run in the Pac-12. I do think they'll win um, eight, nine. Like, it's going to be a winning season for UCLA. I don't think they're going to be terrible like they you know quite frankly been under uh chip kelly but i do think that they put up some points i'm expecting lsu wins 41 24 if you missed my season prediction <laughs> yes i'm saying we have a chance uh, uh i say lsu goes 10 and 2 i think running game on both sides of the ball will be a problem for LSU. It, it's straight up a problem but i do think max johnson is a winner i do think they'll pass the ball i do think they'll put up some points uh 10 and 2 they're one year away all right, guys, in about 15 minutes, we got Mike Scarborough, Buddy Sonji coming up. I want to thank my sponsor tonight, Tremonti's Meat and Seafood. They are located on Old Jefferson near Parkview Baptist. They are reopening after the storm. They, they, they're reopening on Saturday for their normal hours, 9 to 5. Go pop in, get you some tailgate food, and look, if you regret it, come on my show next week and tell me you regret it because I promise you you won't. It is the best. Uh, yeah, I mean, really, their, their, their phrase behind me, good meat ain't cheap, cheap meat ain't good. Uh, and I tell you what, uh, you, you get great value for their money on that. Home of the ribeye roll, that is your ribeye wrapped in cream cheese, jalapenos, and bacon. It is amazing. I smile. Just think about it. They have Chairman's Reserve Wagyu beef, 30 kinds of sausage. They have lunch deli open during the week. Uh, they do catering, and they are your headquarters for Tiger's tailgating and home gating for the 2021 season so y'all give them a try go go check them out tremontis.com link in bio link in the description of this video uh you can give them a call 225-757-7665 you will not regret them <laughs> oh gosh all right okay so who are the two alabama all right all right, all right. this is this is kind of alabama and i'm just gonna say florida i think emory jones is pretty good but we'll see all right great guess he says 42 24 the other night yeah i mean that's that's pretty right on i, I think 41 24 right on spot 
All right, guys. Thank y'all for joining us. Y'all stay tuned. Go grab a soda. Go do what you got to do. Mike Scarborough's coming on. He's going to have great stuff. Buddy Sonji, as always, is a great guest to listen to. Thank you so much for tuning into my first show. I'm looking forward to another great season with all of you. Thank you. Have a great night. Hope everybody's okay with the storm.